Okay, I think I'm going. Hey, I hope you're having a great Friday. So in this video, I want to share a story with you about what happened to me in the last couple of weeks and how I am actually handling my disappointment. No. So for those of you who don't know me, who are new to this page, uh, my name is Andrea Otley. I'm a horse crazy wife and mom of three from a small town in southeastern Oregon. I love um, training and showing reined cow horses in the non-pro level. I have two that I'm showing right now. Hook is my non-pro bridle horse, and I have a uh, three-year-old snaffle bit fajiri horse, um, first time ever that I'm, I'm doing now. So as far as showing in the NRCHA, this is my, um, just wrapping up my second full year. Um, another thing I want you to know is I am really passionate about health and fitness and help, helping other people get fit to ride. And so even though this topic isn't directly related to health and fitness, I just kind of want to give you a little inside look into my life and how I, um, you know, handle disappointment and how we can tie that in to everything that, that we do. So let me give you uh, set the scene for you right quick. Um, Last weekend, I got back from the Reno Snaffle Bit Futurity, where I showed Hook, my bridle horse, in the non-pro bridle, intermediate non-pro bridle, and I showed Duke, my three-year-old, in the non-pro Futurity. And my outcome, the results, um, if you follow this page, I've shared with you, very disappointing. So I am used to winning a check on hook at almost everything I enter. I am very confident um, that I will win a check on him. I did not. I finished about the middle of the pack, had an okay reigning run. I think I was a 212 or a 213. So that's like 71s. Um, typically when I show him in the reigning, we're a good solid uh, 73. So that'd be like a 219-ish. Uh, that didn't happen. And then as far as my coward goes, totally bombed the whole thing. Um, lots of people came up to me and said I should have had a new cow, whatever. What I know to be true is that when that cow came out of the corner, um, for whatever reason, I dropped my bridle rein. Like, so you got to hold a one hand with your bridle reins. And I um, dropped the outside one, which I had to hold a one. I was pulling his nose to the left, which popped that cow right off the fence. Never made it past the center marker going down the fence. I was a 191 put me um, towards the bottom middle of the pack as far as the results go. Why this is disappointing to me is because, like I said, I got used to going in there and marking high, being um, in the top, winning money, all of that stuff. Last year, I won Reno, all three divisions, won the non-pro, intermediate, uh, novice, um, uh, so, so, you know, going into the show, I was feeling good. Um, my horse warmed up nice. He was riding good. Everything was fine. And then that fell apart. So, you know, whatever. Um, then my results from my futurity cult, not, I'm not going to say disappointing except for, because I'm always like, okay, as long as I do my best, then that's all I can ask for. And that's good. So what happened, um, I would have been reserve champion in the amateur futurity had I marked in my reading pattern. So I overspun. I've been showing um, for quite a while now. And uh, I, I mean, I know, you know, that was everybody's consolation. Oh, these things happen. You, you know, just shake it off, blah, 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 which I, I'm not blah, blah, blah. And you, my people who love me and consoled me, that is true. Very true. But we still have to go into our own heads and, and analyze what's going on. So Anyway, yeah, my, um, he, he was okay in the herd. He, in the herd, Duke marked exactly where he's at in his training. It was a really good experience for me. Um, didn't really have huge high expectations or anything that like that, just based on w where we'd come from. And then also in the, the reigning, same thing. I mean, his pattern was nice. It was fine. It was going to be a good solid 210. Um, when I went to spin him to the right, I'm used to turning hook around where I just count my spins and he does his thing. And when I'm enough, I stop. With Duke, I was trying to count and trying to keep this pushed in and this speed going and this part of his body straight and the shoulders lifted and all this stuff. And I flat lost count. And so that happened. Um, 
So, and then with the fence, um, I think it was a 209, just a nice solid 70, 69 right in there. So all of that happened. So I wa walked away, not earning a dime at Reno. It costs a lot of money to show horses, all this pressure, blah, blah, blah. Disappointing, you know, of course we enter to win. So what happens when you don't get the results that you are looking for. So in order to uh, keep myself from rambling on, I wanted to make some notes so we can stick to the point here. So that let, let you set the scene. I just explained to you my disappointing outcome. Now I wanna explain to you three things that I did to actually work through it. So when I got done showing Hook, um, you know, I was by myself and I just went back to my trailer um, and I allowed myself to feel what it felt like to feel disappointed. I did not, um, you know, like, like fall in this hole and ball my eyes out or anything. I just calmed my brain down and I just noticed how I felt. And the reason why I think that's important is life is full of positive and negative emotions and we cannot, it, it just, at least at my stage of living, it is impossible to feel positive all the time. So to go, okay, I, I can't allow myself to feel negative. I got to feel positive. That puts you on this, this completely unrealistic razor's edge. So I allowed myself to go, okay, how am I feeling about this? I'm feeling disappointed. What does disappointing feel like? It feels sad. It feels heavy. It feels yuck, you know? And I just allowed myself to experience the nowness, the present moment of the truth of the reality of what was going on in my body, in my brain at that time. And I allowed myself about two seconds to feel like that before I started grasping for ways to handle the disappointed feelings. So I'm a big personal development fan. I read a lot of self-help books, listen to a lot of audios, get help from people who have been in my industry and do those things like Sandy Collier and Barb Schulte and anyone else that talks in a positive way. A lot of um, athletic um, tr trainers, you know, people who believe that the mind is the most critical element in um, performing at that level. So I do a lot of that. And that's the first thing I did was go find some passage that I could read to figure out how to move on. What do I need to do? And the thing that struck me the most was that I realized that this was not the end. That was not the last time I was going to show my bridal horse. And it was not the last time that I was going to show my snaffle bitter. So having known that it was not the end, it wasn't like this final event and then I die. No, you know, just like um, decompress it. Just realize there's so much more potential and life left in what I am doing and experiencing. Even if that was the last time I was showing Hook and I, you know, handing him over to my son to go into the youth to show, even if that was, you know, I know that it's just forward. We're moving forward. There's, there's new things to learn and grow and see and feel and, and do. And so that gave me, um, just, just a peace of mind to just calm down and go, this isn't the end. It's only the beginning and there's so much more to look forward to, which changed how I was feeling inside. You know, I go from this tight, heavy, yucky feeling to, to expanding and grateful for the experience. And um, so my mood began to shift. Um, the other thing that I did, uh, so this would be the, 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 the third thing really, is I, I looked inside my heart and my soul, and this is not the easiest thing to come on you know, Facebook Live and explain to people, um, but I want it to, to help um, anyone who wants to go after their, their dreams, but they're, they're afraid of things like messing up or feeling disappointed. Um, or looking dumb or any of that. So um, I looked inside of myself for a hidden agenda. Why did I want to win so bad? Why did I want to be at the top? And when, 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 so that, that the, the, the core, the true um, human in me that isn't um, plagued with issues said, because I love and see, I can tear up every time I talk about this. I love showing my horses. 
I love, and, and it doesn't matter if I'm at home working on the maneuvers in my own arena where no one sees me or I'm at a stage like the Reno Snaffle Bit for Charity and I know it's being webcast to, you know, hundreds of people that are watching. I love showing. I love the connection. I love each beat and stride. I love being in tune. I love the feel so much. And I love seeing how, how precise and in tune and in rhythm I can be with my horses. I love it. So and it just makes me have chills all over. And so then winning becomes a side effect of those good feelings that I put into it. So uh, the, the, you know, because I think a, a little of, of this lives in every human that walks the face of the earth, unless you're a saint, <laughs> and that's not me. So there is another piece of me that is, um, that's believed in lies. And that has listened to people and and judged myself and and so there's this this um, part of me that lives in me that talks to me and says things like you have to win so you can prove your value you have to win so that you can be credible to other people you have to win or you're not validated in in your worthiness so th that's the kind of things that you know and it comes in 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 you know self-talking voices of um um, you, you know, you, you, you dropped your bridle reins, you suck, you overspun, you are so bad at this. You're never going to be any good. So there, there is, um, that part that lives in me that says those kind of things. And, and, and then there's this part of me that listens that this is just the scared little girl that says, okay, you're right. I suck. So in order to prove that I don't really suck because I don't want to suck, I got to go win. I got to spin faster. I got to make sure I shut down correct. I got to get out on the corner and, and I beat myself up, right? So I hope I'm not the only one in the world. Like I'm hoping you can relate a little bit to what I'm saying. And so I looked for that hidden agenda inside. And then I, I just kind of, I do a lot of meditating to where I can, I can calm myself down and go, you know, that's not real. That, that's not really who I am. I don't have to listen to that old programming that's telling me that I'm no good because it's not true. And I know it's not. And so I can just slow down, um, just be really in the present moment and realize that I can just let all that go because it's not true. I don't have to believe in something that I don't want to be true in my reality anymore. So if I was winning all the time, how would I ever deal with that monster that lives in me saying that you have to win to be validated? So I actually needed moments like this so that my soul can grow. And, um, you know, the other piece that I, you know, I think we're all connected and um, we're all here to help each other grow. And, and so by me sharing what's happened on a platform like this, someone can hear my message and put it to use in what they're doing to help them achieve their goals. So that, that's another thing that makes me feel really good. So that's what I have for you. I just wanted to share how I handled that disappointment going um, into something, uh, you know, a decent stage. I don't know how much they have added now at the Reno Snaffle Bit for Charity, and it's always been a lifelong goal for me to show there. So glad I did, and I'm so thankful for the lessons that have that, that have come out of that. Uh, just a beautiful thing. The Rain Cow Horse people are, are amazing. They have always, um, they're not the ones judging me about anything like that. It's my own self. It, it really and truly is. So I've met, met, met a lot of uh, friends, um, you know, at my level, uh, people just starting out, the, the trainers um, that have all welcomed me, um, encouraged me, cheered for me. Um, and it's been so awesome to watch them and, and just have something to strive for. So, so cool. Um, what, what I want to say is so I, I'm not really tying this into your health and fitness or weight loss or anything like that very well, but that's okay. You know, you just got to see a little piece of my life where um, the reason why I want to be in the best shape of my life, um, that I want to feel good, that, that I want to look good in my clothes,
I love show my horses. And so I feel like that's the foundation to all of it. So you can, you can take what I'm saying here and apply it to your, to yourself by um, knowing whether it is a weight loss goal or a horse related competition goal, whether you rope or run barrels or show cow horses or rainers or ride pleasure horses, um, whether you have 50 pounds or 10 pounds to lose, you have to go for it. You've got to set your sights high with a big goal so you have a focus, and then you've got to go with it with all your gumption. And if you fall, if something comes along and you feel disappointed, that is an opportunity for you to go to that next step and go, okay, what's my hidden agenda? What um, do I have to look forward to? after this has happened what what's in the future that i can pick myself up and drive towards so that's what i have for you don't be afraid to get uncomfortable where you're at right now is where you're at right now if you have something that you're driving towards in the future you are not going to get there unless you do something now that you have never done before so you have to get uncomfortable. That, that's the, the nature of our, our existence is we are comfortable living right where we're at because that's what keeps us alive in terms of the lions and the tigers chasing us. But we're all safe. We live in America, the best country ever, and no, nothing's after us. <laughs> our safety is pretty much guaranteed. So when we feel threatened to, to expand, expand and grow, that is where we can allow those uncomfortable feelings to happen because that's what stretches us. And that's what helps us morph into the being that we need to become in order to achieve what we're going after. So, all right, that is all I have. I am going to let you go. Have a happy Friday and um, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.